Um, we actually have it here. I put it somewhere. Yeah. Oh, here I've got it. Yeah. Good okay. idea. Okay. And is it my phone? Yeah, we probably don't need it for the first. Okay. I'm, I'm just doing intros and getting to know you guys. So, oh, okay. There we go. I'll use my street jingles, but I can do this. One. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Does it make it? Is it a reference? Yeah. Keep on swinging it on with you. Okay. Now, how do I? Um, how, how do I get my? Yeah. My, my iPad connected. Uh, we'll put, you know, this, one, this one here is what. Um, so if I want to put a power cord on it, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my family. We'll talk about them a bit later. <laughs> but before we do that, um, one of them you may know. He kind of hangs around the campus here a little bit. Um, and uh, Sam, Samuel here, he, he um, works with photogenics here. So you, may have, you may have seen him or met him or whatever. Uh, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. Okay. Uh, all I'd like to know is from you, but before I tell you a bit about me, can I find out from you um, your name? We should all know that. Where you're from? Uh, why here? Okay, so what, what are you, and I don't want to know what God told me, okay, I want to have a bit more than that. So why did God tell you to come and do the school? And hopefully you've got a little bit of an understanding of that. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm hopeless with names, by the yeah. way. Yeah, so you I, put it on your forehead, Yeah, I forget my children's names. <laughs> I've only got four of them. I get my wife pretty good, and I get my son pretty good, but the three girls I get mixed up. So... I apologize ahead of time. It's not because your names aren't important. It's not because you're not important. But it's just the way my brain works. It doesn't work very well at remembering names. Uh, but, so where do we, who's going to start? Who's going to tell me a little bit? Well, so what I want to know is your name, where you're from, and why, why did God lead you here? Why are you here? Okay. Tell me also a little bit of... Uh, why don't you tell me um, how long in YWAP? Okay? Or something like that. Where you did your DDS? Where and when you did your DDS. So just really, I just want to know, you know, in, in one or two minutes, of just a little bit about you. Okay, so tell me what you want to tell me, and particularly why you're here. Okay, who wants to start? <laughs> who wants to go last? <laughs> okay, you're last. Shall we work back? Who wants to go? Okay, who's going to go first? So since you're last, we have to start over this side. Okay, so, I saw, yeah, Selena, your birthday, so you get to go first because yeah. you're so special. <laughs> yeah, I'm Selena and I'm from South Korea. Uh -huh. Whereabouts? Uh, okay. Um, so, as we go to the break, let me tell you a little bit about myself and then you can ask me any question you want. Okay? So, if you've got a question about anything. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then you can ask me questions and we'll start after the break with more teaching. Oh, what happened? We must have. Uh... No, how do we get back? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. So this is my family. Yeah, I know. I know how to go forward. It's back. I always get confused. <laughs> so this is my family. Samuel, you know, he works here with Photogenics. He's very bored at the moment, trying to work out. All his life, he had been so busy. Okay. So from where he was, from whenever, you know, he was at school, and then he left school. He did a carpentry apprenticeship. And he'd get up at four in the morning to go and so he'd get up at four o'clock and he would get on his bicycle because he didn't have a license and he'd drive ride down to the train station two two kilometers away, jump on the train, go to the closest train station, ride pedal to, to wherever he was gonna get picked up, then he'd get taken to work and then the Australia you trade tradesmen, you know, people like Carpenter, they start at seven in the morning. So we'd have to get off and get to some place by six o'clock or six thirty. So get up at four so he could have breakfast and get going. Then he'd get home exhausted. And uh, so he did that for a, a while and then he finished it. So that's obviously very busy. And uh, in, in Australia, if you're an apprentice, you know, you're not an apprentice? Do you know yeah. that word? A learner. Yeah, so you're, you're, it's, a, it's a structured program. So you first of all do six months in a classroom 
and then you go and work alongside someone and also do classes, um, structured classes in a particular field and at the end you get a qualification to say that you're a, a carpenter or a, or a, a Christian. So we call it an apprenticeship. I know they don't have them here like that in, in every state at least. Yeah, trade school maybe, but it's school, but then you also are working with someone who takes four years or so, and you've got to do so many hours, and they teach you the skills and things, so you get qualified to um, and licensed so that you can do what you do. So he, he did that for uh, four years, then he started a building company, and so he was, again, working hard, uh, so he would often be up early, and then he'd start a building company, and then he was asking God, um, he realized that after a few months, about six months, he had an apprentice working for him and had a couple of people working for him. And then he felt like if he kept doing what he was doing, he'd be a successful builder. Uh, but he would get to 40 and ask why. <laughs> what have he done and why have he done it? So he felt like he had he always said, I'm never going to do a DDS. Okay, so he was never going to do a DDS, never join YWAM, never do anything like that. And so uh, be careful of what you promise. What's that? So be careful of what you, uh, <laughs> you tell God you're not going to do. <laughs> and so he ended up, um, obviously, then after, after he'd gone through that process, he came into the DDS in, in New Zealand, Australia, and then uh, came here to lead us DDS. And as, as you know, he's now here. But he's worked, then he's done DDS after DDS, and then he just finished his last DDS a couple of months ago. So now he's trying to work out how to manage yourself when you're not really busy. <laughs> so, good challenge to have. Uh, okay, my next daughter is Claire. So she's 24. Uh, Claire is 22. She's just graduated as a nurse in uh, Sydney. She um, was in Melbourne, same university, a Catholic university in Melbourne. And she, a long story, but um, she, was, she did a DTS in Mexico. Um, and during the DTS, a team from this church came and she, um, one of the people was a YWAM kid that she knew and they, she was at a church in Sydney and Claire got to know the leaders and different things and so in the end it's a small church plant so she felt the Lord led her to go and join that church and be, she could swap universities. So she's now graduated, she's working and earning money for the first time, or reasonable money, she's always worked but she's enjoying that. Um, and she's looking to, we call it a grand year in our culture. What it means is it's a practical year. It's the first year she's practicing. We call it a grand, grand year, graduation year. And then she's looking at doing midwifery. Um, she's thinking maybe uh, next year that she can get a, a, a placement. So in our culture, you, you have to work as a midwife in a, in a hospital. And you've got, that's the hardest thing to get is to get a placement because there's only a few of them. And then you can study um, separately. So. She's working on that, um, doing really well, and then she's still, uh, yeah, not sure what God's saying and things like that. Anna, uh, she's just done two years with YWAM, and she included doing the BCC here. She did a primary healthcare school, she did a DTS, um, and a few other things. And uh, she was praying about whether to do a U of N degree in community development and continue on with uh, YWAM at that point, or whether to do one at the uh, local university. So she's also going to the Catholic University. She felt that's what God had for her. She had some friends that were struggling, and she felt she needed to spend some time with them, and she needed, uh, we're very happy to have her home. It was nice to have her home. So she's um, uh, 20, and so she's at university. She's studying international studies and commerce, uh, particularly with a heart for community development. Um, it's her, passion. She's also just deciding whether to do accounting or human resources or management. So those sort of things that she's, she's doing. She's doing well. Just trying to work out how to study and write essays and all those things you learn when you first start at university. Uh, and doing well. And then Katie, uh, youngest, is 18 and she's just finished school last year. So our school finishes in December or November, December. And so she's finished school and she's taking a year off. Uh, well, it's not really a year off, she's taken a year off um, university. And so she's working as a, um, uh, so she's 18, so what she's doing is she's t taking six months and working, she works at McDonald's, um, and as well as that she's doing a course in childcare. Um, she was here last week, our whole family, miraculously almost, our whole family was here, I think it was December, do you remember? 
maybe December, maybe the beginning of December or November. But Samuel was here obviously because he was um, running a DTS. We actually were here for his graduation, which was fun. And it must have been December. Then um, uh, Anna was at, felt that she should do the uh, school, the VCC here. And then Claire had felt she was finishing, she was graduating, so she was going to take some time off and come and be with and see with me, her brother, and his fiance I wanted to check her out. Uh, <laughs> not that she would say that, of course, but you know, she wanted to get to know her a little bit. So she came for two weeks uh, over to visit. And then because the three of them were going to be here, they thought, oh, Kate better come too, because otherwise she's going to miss out. And she's finishing school and she's graduating, so they worked out how she could get here. So she was coming. And then about a month before they were all here, I, was, um, I'm, I work a little bit with the campus on staff development and leadership training and things. I'm just working with their leadership team, which I'll be doing on Thursday. <laughs> Not today, I did it up tonight. That's a different one. <laughs> Thursday, I'm doing that. Uh, but so, and they said, we were talking, and they said, "Well, can you come up to this meeting in in February, uh, in December?" And I said, "Well, uh, maybe. Let me pray." Because a month months of short notice when you have your year. But then I found it was the week they were all going to be there. So I talked to them and said, "You would you like me to come or not? <laughs> yeah. Do you want time without Dad? <laughs> Do you want?" To? So they had a week with me and a week without. So I was able to come up, and then Helen. My wife said she wasn't going to miss out, so she came up. So we were able to have an early Christmas and have a great time uh, together. But when we were here, um, Kate, we were in the Thursday night meeting, and Lauren was speaking on education and the need of education, calling people to education. And Katie had no idea what she should do. She'd struggled all her life trying to work out, do I hear God, don't I hear God, what's he saying to me, what should I do with my life? Um, she was enrolled in a in, in university in health sciences, which, which is a very broad, it's like a bachelor degree for carers and you know, people in nutrition and all of those sorts of things. So she'd enrolled in that because she didn't know what else. She had to, in our culture, again, you have to enroll in something. So she's, um, she was here and she, when Lauren started speaking about education, she suddenly thought, oh, I could do that. And so she talked to Claire, her sister, and said, what do you think? Because we, we weren't here. And Claire said, I think that's really good. So they began to pray together, the four of them, <laughs> and they felt like God was saying, so she felt, feels like God was saying to work in education. So her first step was to do a childcare course this six months, which is, uh, means that she can work in, in, with children, as so that's a kind of four month school, one month practical and three month lectures. So she's doing that at the moment, uh, as well as working in, that's only two days a week, she works at McDonald's still three days a week to get money, so that she can go and do a DTS in Denver, Colorado. So, and she'd already felt to go there, and the neat thing is it's just next door to where Samuel's getting married, so she'll be able to come up to the wedding and we'll see her there. So it's just nicer. I just love the way God puts all the bits and pieces together, um, you know, how committed he is to family, committed to relationship, committed to all the kids. All of them heard God differently. All of them, you know, their journey's different. Samuel and Claire have always known pretty much what they're going to do. Uh, well, when I say that, Samuel, in terms of building, but now he's doing something totally different. So it's really neat to watch them and see how God leads them and guides them. Um, however, Kate had no idea what God was saying and has struggled all her life trying to work out, is, does God speak to me? Doesn't he speak to me? You know, how do I know it's God? And, you know, the, the sisters, and we, we had long talks with her and she'd still be confused. <laughs> so, sure none of you are like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> and yet, and then, but when she really needed to God, God just really spoke, and she just knew it was God, saying, "This education is your thing." And so she's now enrolled in a an early childhood primary degree at the same university, Catholic University. We, we, it's really interesting. They've all found degrees, and that they've all looked at it right across the board at all the all the different universities in Melbourne, and they've all come to the same university, which is a Catholic university, which is the most Christian one we have. So it's, that's interesting. Um, and who knows what she'll do. She may end up doing her degree with um, YWAM. I don't know. Um, for me, I grew up in a family of five kids. My dad was an Anglican or Episcopalian minister. My mother was a school teacher. And so um, that, when my younger sister went to school, my mother went back teaching. But when she went back teaching, she found that um, there weren't any jobs in 
in, in primary school, which is what she was trained for, because there, was, there, there were too many. So she ended up working with intellectually disabled children. She would get a job there. And at that stage, which was you know, almost um, oh, like 40 over 40 years ago, uh, what they used to get the kids to do was they'd get them sitting at a table like th in, a, in a table and they'd give them newspaper and they'd get them to fold the newspaper up into a smaller piece as they could and then they'd unfold the paper and then they'd fold it up and they'd do that all day. And the goal was to keep them quiet and occupied. And so mum being a teacher said, this is not good, I can teach these children. And so she began teaching them and she was probably a pioneer in that area in New Zealand uh, 40 years ago. My sister did a, a, a thesis on that at one point, or a, or a, a paper on it, and uh, she looked at a hospital. In the end, she couldn't do it, it was too sad. Um, but this was probably uh, you know, 10 years later, and they were still treating children like they just need to be looked after and can't accomplish anything. So she, why I mention that is, the thing I learned from her is that she would treat every child different. Okay? So every child was unique, and every child can learn. And so she would um, really, I guess, in her way, see God as to how to help that child learn and how to bring them to their greatest capacity. And that might be being an independent eater. It might be, um, you know, learning to read. But it, could be, it could be just learning to be still. Um, you know, so whatever level, she would work with them and teach them. Some children she would get into a normal school because their problem was often social as much as it was intellectual. Okay, and so um, that, that w I guess that, that was, so I saw education from her perspective as being very individual and that every child can learn. Myself, I didn't really like school. Okay, I was a kid sitting at the back and I would be, um, you know, I'd be clicking my pen because I, you know, I just clicked my pen, I didn't even know I was doing it. You know? And so I'd click my pen and then the teacher would say, stop clicking your pen. So I'd stop clicking my pen and then my foot would start tapping, you know. <laughs> the teacher would say, stop tapping your foot. And so I'd stop tapping my foot, and then, you know, I'd start rocking on the chair. And the teacher would say, stop rocking on your chair, you know. And so I'd be sitting there, not clicking my pen, not tapping my foot, not rocking on my chair, and using all my energy, trying not to move. <laughs> I mean, so I, I, I didn't really enjoy school. I did okay at school, but I didn't really enjoy it, okay? I, I, Sitting still at a desk was, I, I found awkward. It wasn't my, um, yeah. So if you feel like you need to stand up, feel free to do that. I have no problem with that. If you want to go and sit in the back, you know, you do what helps you learn. Okay. So I, um, yeah. You know, I learned very early on if someone's looking at you and, and dead still, it's not usually because they're listening, it's usually because in their head they're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> This look, you know, means, means, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in the finger anyway, I just know what I'm like, you know. <laughs> so if we don't do some activities regularly, you know, half the class is looking and you think, oh, they're really getting it, they're so still and quiet. <laughs> they're just kind of not almost, almost asleep and not quiet, you know, that place where if, you, if you're not careful, you'll go to sleep, but you can just, you just keep awake and, you know, so... That, that was often me. So, didn't really enjoy school. Came, did, did, I actually trained as a building economist in a, in a practical course, um, or we call body surveyors where we are, which looks after all of the money in the buildings. So we do feasibility studies and all of that stuff. Then um, got called to YWAM, did my DDS in New Zealand, uh, went on outreach to Russia to the Olympic Games, came back, um, th this was 1980, uh, did a school of evangelism, came to Australia to be involved in mobile outreach teams. Um, so did lots of mobile outreach teams, did drama teams and puppet teams all over the place. Well, lots of people get saved, which was exciting. But um, in that process, uh, even though a lot of people got saved, they, a lot of them didn't get into the church because they didn't know how to connect with the church. And so my, um, and in my SOE, I heard a guy called um, Keith Warrington and he shared a, me a message or a seminar on the kingdom of God and he talked about how the Bible doesn't really talk about the gospel of salvation very much, it does a little bit. So the, the Bible is not about salvation, that may be a shock for some of you, but it's not about salvation, it's not about getting to heaven, 
for some of you said heaven will be boring if that's all you think it is. Do you, do you, do you understand? If that's your vision of heaven, is I just want to get there, it's going to be, you're going to be bored there. Okay, so he, what, what the, the Bible is about, and this is, this is what radically changed my life, the gospel is the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, it's the gospel of the kingdom of God. And the Bible is about the kingdom of God, not about getting saved. Okay? It's, it's like, um, and, so, and so the whole Bible talks about the kingdom of God, right from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It's telling you about the kingdom of God. What does the kingdom of God look like? How do we behave in the kingdom? How do we, um, how do we interact with each other? How are we created? How are we created to live? Um, the, the, one of the key indicators that I love the Lord's Prayer. And he says, pray that my kingdom will come and my will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? And if you read the whole, all of Scripture, when, when it talks about the gospel, it's usually talking about the gospel of the kingdom. It says, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the earth and then the end will come. So it's not the gospel of salvation, the gospel of the kingdom. And let me just explain the difference. My son's getting married. Okay? And so many people, when they're getting married, they focus on the wedding day. Okay? The, the, the girl has got you know, the dress she's going to wear, the food they're going to eat, the, you know, the two walking, and she's got this whole fantasy of what the day's going to be like. It's all about her. and you know, She'll be very you know, much. And it's just this... You know, and even people who haven't even got any, aren't even engaged, or haven't got any, any boyfriend, you know, can spend hours and hours as girls dreaming about this, this wedding and this marriage and what it's going to be like, and it's all about the day. And then, you know, so that's what guys, guys are a little more, little more um, basic. They, they think more about the night, but we won't go into that, okay? <laughs> but they're, focused, they're also focused on just getting married, and as I say, we won't, we won't, we won't explain any more on that. But, <laughs> you know I mean. Okay, but they're also dreaming about getting married, you know, but for another reason. Okay, so, so, but, but that's, that's what it's, that, that's, that's like, like thinking about only salvation when it go, comes to the Bible and to God. Okay, see, the, the wedding day, as wonderful as it is, is just the beginning. It's the ceremony that, that starts a life together. And marriage is not about the wedding day, it's about a life together. And yes, you need the wedding day, and it's an important day. Don't just go straight into the life together. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you miss the celebration. You know, it's interesting to me. I know people who have been living together, and they get married, and it's like, it's kind of an anticlimax. Do, do, do you know what I mean? It's like, we're getting married. <laughs> great, great to make a commitment like that. But it's an anticlimax. It doesn't have the same meaning, do, do, you know, as... It's a progression. And so, um, you know, getting married is just the beginning of a life together. Well, salvation is the same. See, salvation is just the entry into a life with God, a life in the kingdom. And it's, it's the entry into this place where God lives and dwells and shows us how to live and how, shows us how we were made to live. You know, and I, I growing up, I, I can, I'll confess something to you. I used to read the Bible. I know you're glad I read the Bible, but I used to read it to try and work out what I could get away with. <laughs> you know, no, it doesn't say anything about that. You know, <laughs> yes, I think I can do that. <laughs> I'm sure no one else would do that. And that's what I, I kind of read and try to work out. You know, what was the minimum standard and still make it to heaven? You know, how how do I? You know, and so I'd work out. You know, some of the words I didn't understand, so I probably got it wrong. <laughs> But that was my goal. What's the minimum standard to be a Christian and, and have the minimum standard? Um, and, you know, that's such a, such a, a shallow, narrow way. Uh, you're going to miss out on everything. You're going to miss out. You're always feeling like you're looking over the fence and not enjoying sin. And, you know, you're feeling awkward in the kingdom because you're not really enjoying that either. You know? And yet God, we were created to live a particular way. I'm old enough now to see people who have lived the other way and the destruction in their lives. You know, I, I, it destroys you. If you don't live the way God created us to live, your life gets destroyed. Your relationships are destroyed. You can get away with it a little bit when you're younger, but the older you get, it all catches up with you. And I, I just want to say to you that God, see, God is not a, a set of rules that we have to obey. That's not what the Bible's about. The minimum, you know, the minimum standard to get into heaven. 
That's not what the gospel is. The gospel is, this is how I created you to live life. This is what you were made for. And so, in the Bible, I was just reading this morning in John, it says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, in the Bible is truth, and as we know and, and delve into the truth, it actually brings freedom in our life. It brings joy in our life. It brings hope in our life. Okay? It's, it's not about trying to stop us having fun. It's about showing us how to really have fun. How to really enjoy life. Um, and I, I can say to you, you know, I'm you know, not as young as I used to be, but uh, I enjoy life more now than I ever have. Okay? I love life. I love doing what I do. I love having four wonderful children who are serving God. I love having a wonderful wife who we enjoy uh, life together. You know, I, I, life is good. And it keeps getting better. Does it have struggles? Of course it has struggles. But I know how to go through those struggles. I go through them with God. I go through them with a wonderful wife. I go through, you, you know, and so it shows us how to do life. And the Bible is about how to do life properly. You know, and, and so sometimes we can feel like we're missing out when we, when we follow God. But let me tell you, you're not missing out. Okay? You're not missing out. You are, you are actually having the fullness of life. Because that's, that's what Jesus promised, and I'm here to tell you that's true. He said, I came to give you life. Life in all its fullness. And, and that's what God promises. Okay. I've diverged a bit, but that's okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll find me doing that during the week. Okay, so just, we'll have a break now and we'll come back. You can still ask me questions or you can ask me in the morning too. How's that sound? Then I'm 12 because I'm, I have another... Mm. I know. I, I like time. I'm actually a, I'm a, I'm a, not, I'm a, I'm a Western person. I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, you know what I worked out as an educator? If we finish at 12 o'clock, any, anything I say after 12 o'clock, no one hears. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is thinking about lunch and when's he going to stop and when am I going to get lunch? What am I having for lunch? Is it going to be good? Is it not going to be good? What am I going to do if it's not good? Do I, want, do I have time to go down and get a hamburger? You know, yeah, all of these really important issues. So basically you stop teaching at that point anyway. <laughs> Whether your mouth lips stop flapping or not. So. My lips can keep flapping after 12, but I know I have stopped teaching anyway. <laughs> okay. What, uh, what I want to do is I just want to continue on talking just a little bit of my life so you know who I am and where I come from. Um, we got up, I did a DTS and SOE, then came to Australia, did a lot of evangelism. Then I married my one wife, Helen. <laughs> um, I still only have one wife, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> but you're not. Um, my wife's a nurse, I trained as a nurse, and she's a few years ago, um, we left the Wyoming base probably about five or six years ago, maybe a bit more, uh, because my, my kids were getting older and I felt they needed to have another experience other than a um, YWAM community, which is all they've known all their lives. And so um, we, we moved out into our own home um, so we could learn about, it was interesting, really interesting, you know, just simple things like um, having dinner together because they'd grown up in YWAM by the time we shifted out, um, Samuel was probably 15 or so, um, but they were so used to sitting at the table with their friends and not all, us all sitting together because we'd all usually eat um, at, at the YWAM campus except on the weekends and so they were and so the idea of all sitting down to a family meal every night and every meal was a bit of a that, that was a bit unusual <laughs> so we had to learn how to how to do some of these very basic family things and we've got it down now some of our meals will often go for a couple of hours because <laughs> <laughs> that time we talk so we chat we talk about oh who knows we can talk about you know why, why is gay marriage wrong you know, <laughs> or oh, is it wrong? <laughs> so I won't make an assumption. So we might talk about is gay marriage wrong, and why? You know, how does it all work? And so we might spend, you know, get everyone's opinion, and the kids and everyone's got an opinion. If anyone knows Samuel? You know, he's got an opinion. <laughs> so, most of my kids all got an opinion. So, uh, but we'll chat about all sorts of things, just life. You know, um, 
could, could be chatting about what they're doing and, you know, Kate could be saying, you know, I'm really, you know, struggling hearing God and we might all have our input and pray for her or we might... So dinner times are, that's, that's what we do every dinner. But we had to learn how to do that when we came into our home. It wasn't a normal, you know, the kids weren't used to doing that. So we had to learn. Um, and so now our evening meal, we always, um, almost always have together. So even if I'm home only with Kate, the youngest, because my wife went back nursing. That's where we got, I remember how we got onto this. So my wife went back nursing when we went, went out um, she, she just felt before that she'd nursed all the way through, but mainly to provide money for the properties we were buying or for YWAM. Mm. And she just had bits and pieces, but she felt it was time to go back. She did a refresher course and started nursing again two or three days a week. Um, she works on what's called a bank, which means she can say when she wants to work. And um, she, she, that's she gets shifts for that. But then a, a couple of years, a few years ago, she felt it was time to train as a midwife. So uh, she, when she came into YWAM, um, a couple of years ago, uh, <laughs> a number of years ago, she had, she had wanted to be a midwife, felt that's what God had called her to, but she had laid it down to join YWAP. And so at this point, she felt God encouraged her, it was time to pick it up again. So she spent three years um, part time studying to be a midwife. Last year, she had to work in a, in a hospital for three days a week. Um, that's been her priority. And then um, so she's just graduated as a midwife. She's just uh, she's doing pre and postnatal work, and she's just she's got, done the course. She's got one course she has to do, uh, but now you've got to get a particular qualification to do um, the birthing in the birthing um, suite. So she's doing that. She loves it. She just loves the fact that you can um, be with someone when they're the most vulnerable. Uh, they don't, you know, they try, got this new, often first time a new baby, and they. You know, we don't know how to feed the thing, they don't know how to change the stuff. You know, this thing that, that you've got, and it's probably going to be with them for a while. And, you know, you know, she's, sometimes it's really funny. You know, they give it to the father, and it's like the father's holding this baby and trying to work out, you know. Now, what do I do? <laughs> you want to change its nappy, and it's like this fear comes over. <laughs> you know, uh, yes, <laughs> what do I do? You know, and so you know, she's able to help them in that point of vulnerability, mm -hmm. and give them good input, mm -hmm. and uh, help them practically, and help them in lots of ways. And how to talk about how to be a parent, which is why she had always wanted to be a midwife. Mm -hmm. to help so that's what what, um, what she did. But as I said, coming coming into our home. Um, one of the reasons was learning how to be a family together and I, I, I encourage you that's part of even as, as teachers part of your role is to create community mm. we're talking about teachers God can use and your school your classroom is a community okay? and so you've been here now for six weeks I think huh? Mm -hmm. and so Gloria and Vaitulu have have created a community here. You you act in a particular way. You do certain things at morning tea. You, you stay there. I go to some schools and everyone disappears at morning tea. Okay, grab their coffee and disappear. Okay, but that but, but that's the culture that create it's created. You know, everyone's busy. They've got phone calls to make and they you know so they use morning tea to do the things they need to do. And it's probably because that's what the school leader does. Do you, do, do, do you see? And so, so as a, as a teacher, you create the community. You can create a community that's joyful and happy, and where we care for each other, we pray for people, and honour the fact that Georgina's just gone through a, a trauma, and we give her a gift and, and say we care. Or you can, you know, say a five minute, you know, two minute prayer, and, and it's over. You know, you acknowledge it. You've done what you have to do. do you, you've done the minimum. Do, 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 do. And so, you create the culture as a teacher. And that culture is more of what is going to, or as much about what's going to impact the kids as what you actually say. Mm. So hopefully you guys are being impacted. You've all done different schools, and, and each of them has a different, slightly different culture. They all have a YWAM flavour, which is very different to if you go to university. You know, one of the big adjustments for Anna, who's just going to university, is it's very different to our U of N schools. She, she's left to her own device. She's got to write in a particular way. She's very particular. They, they care about whether you do the notations absolutely accurately or not. You know? <laughs> Why we not, we don't care about that too much. Have you got the idea? Have you got, and we'll help you, you know? So, <laughs> for me, that's a relief. I, I've got a few degrees now. And um, 
I still can't. I still can't do notations yeah. properly. I try the. I do the hard best I can. I try really, really hard. And I think go over and over and over and think yes, I've got it right. And inevitably, I've missed a few and got it wrong. And you know, I've just come to terms with that. <laughs> so, but but our culture is different, and we might talk about that a little bit later on. We you create the culture, okay? And you and that's what we had to do. So when we shifted from YWAM into our home, we had to create a culture. For our home, and one of those things is we have meals together. So, Katie, sometimes because how it works, um, sometimes it's just Kate and me at home. You know, Anna will be out with her friends or doing something, and, and when Kate was away at YWAM, often it would just be Kate and I at home at night. And I'd say to Kate, "Well, do you want to do you want to watch the news or watch TV while we um, have dinner?" And just about always, not not every night, but just about every night, she'd say, "No, no, no, we need to sit at the table because when we sit at the table, we talk." Okay, and we chat and we, you know, so we sit at the table, just the two of us, and we'll talk. We'll talk about all sorts of things, because that's our culture. Do you, do you understand? She knows at the table, we talk. If we sit down and watch TV, we might chat a little bit, but we're watching TV. You know, it's a distraction to relationship. And so, so we'll just the two of us, I'll cook dinner or she'll cook dinner, and we'll sit down and we'll have dinner together and we'll chat and talk and might go for half an hour, might go for two hours. <laughs> Whatever, whatever happens. There's no time limit on it. We don't have, we don't rush off. You know, Saturday night we always have a barbecue. Welcome anyone who wants to come. Um, you know, so sometimes it's just our nuclear family. Sometimes we have, you know, they will bring their friends over. Because uh, barbecues are easy. Do, do, you know, that's why we do it that way. You know, so this last Saturday, this last Saturday, Anna had a few friends over, and you know, so and that, it's that's the culture that we've created. You know, so Saturday night we can have anyone over. Other nights we can, but you need to. It's more planned. Do you, do you understand? Saturday night is fairly. We're fairly free. You know, you can just just let us know. We're, you know, there's always room for one more in our family, um, especially on Saturday. Well, there is any night, but that's particularly Saturday night. So you create a culture that 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 says something that that creates values. You know, you've got your belief tree here. We well, see so your culture comes out of your beliefs and out of your values um, through your principles into into your practices. Do, do you understand? So, uh, you're, you're, and, and into your fruit. Do, do, do you understand? So the fruit comes from the fact that we have a belief system that, that works its way out into all of life. So, um, as I say, this is, this is just a rabbit trail. But you, hopefully we'll, we'll do lots of these because I want... As we go through, my expectation is God's going to build a picture for you. Do, do you understand? And so I'm not going to teach, and I am going to teach, I'm going to have a linear path, but from that path, we're going to go all over the place. Okay? And um, if we've got time, I might even talk about those. Uh, has anyone talked about those four teaching styles that Alana does? You know, the, the linear, the circular, the, no, you know, the no, matrix, no, yeah. and... We might touch on that. I, I'm not. It's not my great area of expertise, but it can help us understand how different cultures learn. Um, we might. We'll see how we go. We might even touch on that today. We'll see. Um, okay. So, in YWAM, I we started a YWAM base. At that time, a couple of um, bases at around. What, oh, then we pioneered a YWAM base in Adelaide, mm -hmm. uh, just after we got married. Right? And um, while we were there, a, a couple of our bases got the DTS accredited with the government, which meant that our students, Australian students, could get um, some money from the government, called an Oz study. It's just it's a study allowance. And um, after two bases had done that separately, we thought as a leadership, we should, probably should pray and ask God, is this a good idea? So um, we spent a couple of years going through that process. And at the end of it, we felt, yes, it was a good idea, not to get the money from the government, but for accountability, for just all sorts of things. We just felt it was the word of the Lord, for consistency, for just lots of reasons. And so we, I, we went through that process, and I ended up leading that process. Um, I had to do a course um, for us to run it in, in Adelaide, which no one else had to, but we did. Um, and it was called a certificate, very exciting title. It was called a certificate for in workplace training and assessment category two. Okay, doesn't that, doesn't that really excite you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. the paragraph, exactly. <laughs> you know, so you had a whole page, on, you know, the title page is like this whole page written with, you know, then it had a few other numbers and all sorts of other things. So. <laughs> 
So that was that was a cause. It was a little overwhelming. And when I when I went to do it, my thinking was, see, I I grew up with what we'll talk about a bit later, very Greek understanding of education. Mm. We had lots of family friends who were university professors, and um, education was very important in my family. But I, I, because of my own not liking the system, I grew up, I, I didn't really respect education at all. I just thought it, it was just arrogant. The, the, the whole system, I, I, I love the people, so they were good friends of ours. But I didn't like the system that said that if you have a PhD, you're more valuable than if you are a plumber or a drain layer or a, there were all these things that I didn't like. I didn't like the theoretical nature of it. So there were things that I reacted to, and you know. So when I did my my course, my training, um, you know, it, I just didn't have I didn't have any respect for education. And so it's really interesting. I've ended up where I am. So when I went to do this course, I thought they're not going to understand me. I'm going to have to change everything. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be full of, you know, all this. I'm going to have to write things in, you know, my language. I'll be um, it, full of BS. I don't hope you don't use that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to write. If you don't know what that means, it's okay. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to have to write in a way that just, you know. But when I got there, I found they talked my language. Okay? They gave me language for what I believed. They talked about outcomes, that, that we, we train for outcomes. We'll talk a bit about this hopefully during the week. That, that, you, that once you work out what your outcome is, what do you want them to look like at the end of your course, then you, then you work out your learning strategy, how you're going to get there. And then you work out your assessment strategy, which is how you're going to make sure they get there. Mm. And, and so it's a very simple process. And I thought, oh, this is, I understand this. And they let me use my School of Frontier Missions I used that as my example. I wrote that up um, and went through the process with that. And, they, and when I was doing it, if you, um, there's, there's three skills, knowledge, and character are the things that you're training people in. And we'll, again, talk about that a bit more. But I didn't think they would care about character, that it would all be about knowledge and skills, particularly knowledge. But as I was writing it and trying to be you know, very careful about what I said and, you know, to avoid too much Christian jargon because it was just a secular college. Uh, my lecturer said, well, if they're going to be working in, in Russia, they need more, uh, what they call the effective domain, more character. And so you need to write that in. And she helped me to think, how are you going to put it in? How are you going to assess it? And I began to realize that education isn't something I need to be afraid of. Uh, and so going through that process, um, we, then, we then started getting our courses and why we were accredited. And we had all these consultants telling us what we needed to change. And said, well, you need to change this to fit the, the mould. And I knew that if God had given us our training, he does a good job, that it must be good, but I didn't have the language to communicate what we did. And I felt that was the problem. So I did a degree in adult education. Okay, I went to the University of South Australia, which is where I lived. And I did a, a, a bachelor's degree in adult and vocational education. So that I could have the language to be able to communicate with these consultants what we did. And so um, I found it really helpful, found it useful. Um, and so my, my degree is, my first degree is in adult education. So I, I went through that process, um, learned heaps, and was able to communicate and understood that what we do in YWAN is brilliant education. It's a brilliant education model. At its best. Okay, it's not always at its best, I must confess, but, but at its best. The, the, the heart that, that's in there is a brilliant education model. The whole thing of learning and doing um, integrated together is a, is a really great learning process that, um, that most people can't afford. They can't do it. They don't have the capacity. But because we are linked with a mission agency, we can integrate our learning and doing to a much greater degree than most people can. So my daughter, um, who's doing nursing, her home is the university, and then she goes out and does some practical work. Okay, so when she was doing her degree, so she her home's a university, and then she'd have practical. So she'd go out and do some practical work, but then she'd go back to her home where she felt safe at the university. And then at the end, she's qualified, and she goes and she steps into this, and the, and the hospital becomes her home, and they have to have people to train her and work with her because she doesn't really know how to function in that area. Now she was a bit better because she had worked in a, ho in a um, hospital before, but there we go. Um, but 
So, so the model is, you know, out of the fact that we can integrate, we can go on outreach, we can, you know, and I, I would like to see our model even more integrated. You know, like I'd like to see our internships where you have more lectures and it's more integrated because I think that's the best way. Learn something and do it and put it into practice straight away or as soon as you can and then learn from what you've done and bring it back into your theory. It's, it's called a process of praxis, mm -hmm. okay, which is you, you do and then you theor or you learn and then you do and then you, you, from what you do you, you put it back into your theory. It's actually praxis is the word, the Greek word for Acts in the Bible, the book of Acts. It's a book of praxis, which is interesting. Okay, so we're diverging a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we got our courses accredited. Um, our our YWAM education is brilliant. There's those sorts of th there's the live, the fact that we live and learn together. The fact that it's lifelong. That we don't just front end everything, but you, you take it as you need it. Mm -hmm. um, I think some we've gone a little too far that way. We need to come back, and like we're doing in our early course here, you, you, you tend to do a, a, a concerted effort, you know, front end a bit, and then go out and put it so, but it's awesome, but that, and that's okay as long as it's integrated with practice, which is what we do with our internships and things. So um, our model of education is really good. So then I went on, um, I did another degree, a master's degree in community development, and again, in that, my, my whole thesis was looking at why do we educate kids the way we do? Who said it was a great idea to put kids in a classroom? Where did that come from? Okay. Um, why do we educate kids in a classroom? Is it because it's the best methodology or is it because it's efficient? You know, if it's, you know, all of those things. So that's, that, I had all those questions anyway, so that's what I decided to do. So I, my um, thesis for my master's was looking at um, the history of education really in trying to say where where does our our practice of education where does this our fruit our actions and our principles where do they come from who, who decided them okay and so we'll hopefully look at that a little bit probably um, we might start today or we'll get on to it tomorrow okay so that's a little bit about me then I I'll, so then because we set up this thing called we, we weren't able to call it our, our um, accredited organization in Australia a university because that name is protected by law so we call it Institute for the Nations and to ensure that we were connected to the university they invited me David Hamilton invited me to sit in on the leadership team for the University of the Nations um, so I came and sat in and each time I'd say okay I've sat in this time do you want me back next time thinking hoping they'd say no and I didn't have to make leave the money to go to these trips anymore <laughs> and each time I said oh no great great and so I must have done something right or wrong and because then after a little while they said would you consider taking on um, the role of the international dean for education mm -hmm. and I said I take it on acting dean because I have a particular set of gifts Okay, I'm a developer. I, I'm not a. I'm not mm. trained in early childhood primary training as an adult education. Not in um, early childhood primary. Although I'm, I, I'm familiar with it, both with my own kids and with my mother. Mm. It's not my area. I'm not an expert in that area. Um, I love adult education, and I'm a developer. I'm not a. Mm. I'm not a maintainer. So I said I'll take it on for two years, acting dean, and see if my gifts match where the college is up to. It didn't really take me very long. I knew. I felt like I was home, mm. and I felt this was where I should be, and uh, have enjoyed working with wonderful people like Waitulu and Georgia, mm. Georgina, well, like Georgina. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria and Ruth, and just wonderful people all over mm. the world, had such a privilege to work with, who had such a passion for education, and um, you know, together, I, you know, I, I might tell you a little bit of the history of the college another time, we don't need more um, me talking, so we'll, we'll um, stop that. But before we go into something else, has anyone got any questions? You, I'm happy to answer any questions about anything, if you have any. Yep? Uh, um, can I make a question more? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you did you want to say that every teacher is a developer of a culture in the classroom? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so every... So, we, we will always develop a culture. What that culture will be will be determined by us. By us, not the students. No. Well, it's with the students, but we are the one. See, it's like with my family. My kids are great kids, okay? But as a parent, my role is to help them 
you know, we might talk about it. So some things we would talk about as a family of what do we want the culture to look like. But I'm the one who's, who's di not dictating, <laughs> but helping to create. And so there are things like sitting at the table, which I dictated. They didn't always want to do that right at the beginning. But I felt like God had given me a word that we needed to make sure that we sat around the table. It came from my own family culture, but it's also a value that we needed somewhere where we connected together as a family. So I, dict I directed that. I said, yes, we are going to do this. And after a while, it became a habit. As I say, now, you know, they want to do that. You know, you know that, that's, that's a really important part of our culture. So there were things, but there were other things that we created together. And it's obviously a combination of me as a teacher and us as the students but I need to lead. So if I want it to be a happy place. So, so for instance, as a family, we have a couple of rules that we've always had from when we were children, mm -hmm. that we respect each other, that we like each other. Okay? So I don't accept that we don't like each other. If you're having a fight, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And if, you're not, if you don't like each other's personality at the moment, that's okay, but you need to work at it. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable to go through life not liking each other as brother and sister. Mm -hmm. like you have lots of friends, you can, if you, it's up to you. But in our family, we, we all like each other. We all get on. And as you can tell, any family, we have very different personalities. My family, we have strong personalities. Any of you know Samuel? He's got a strong, <laughs> he's strong flavour. Okay? So, and other ones in my family, not all of them are strong. Okay? Some are stronger, some are weaker, and some can feel dominated. And, and just, you know, so we make sure that we honour each other and respect each other. And that's part of our culture that I, you know, that we've always had. We always tell the truth. Okay, so we don't we don't lie. So so some of these are right from when they when they are small, we're creating a culture of our family, of what that's gonna look like. Okay, and we and we you know it's exhausting at times some of these things, but we but we, we have a few very few things that we say these are this was what will mark our family. Okay, and so again, four children, all different. So Samuel, we he's never had any problems with the truth. Okay. Anyone, again, if any one of you knows him, he will tell you more than you need to know. Okay. <laughs> if he's having a heart, you know, he's doing something wrong, we knew he was doing something wrong because he'd tell us. And if we asked, have you done this? He'd say, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also done this, you know. <laughs> so, and he'd say, well, okay, thanks for telling us that. <laughs> because, you know, he, he just, he, was not, he never tried to hide anything, whereas other, other children did. You know, and so they 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 have to work on that. But we, every one of them, telling the truth is important. And we they'll get into more trouble if they lied to us than if for the action that they actually did. Okay, so it was better for them to tell us the truth, and we would we would it would always be a, a consequence because we wanted to disciple them to know what was right. Mm -hmm. But if they lied to us, that was the most serious. And respect was also another thing. So we create, so I know it's a long way of answering the question, but in the classroom it's the same thing. So you dictate some things, you, 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 de you determine how are you going to be when you come in in the morning? Are you going to be ready when they come in and you're going to be there right on time? Because that'll create a culture. So if, if I too lose hair, she welcomes you, there's lovely flowers out. Um, you know, or whatever, or, you know, the classroom's ready and she's ready and, and then you know that, but if you turn up and there's no one here and you wait five past five, two, it rushes in, oh, I'm sorry, I got held up, you know, and she does it every morning. Now, she does it once, that's fine. But if she does it every day, do you understand? That creates a culture. And yeah. we're responsible for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can, you can, yeah. And I think you can change culture. It's harder, but you can change culture also. Family and culture is very important, and we'll talk about that later in the week. Sorry, that's a long, long answer to a very simple question. <laughs> Anyone else dare ask a question? <laughs> Any other questions? Yep. How many years in Ireland? Uh, since 1980. So what's that? 34? 33, 34. And you share, you say you're uh, major in adult education. Uh -huh. So what's, what do you think, what's the biggest difference between adult education and childhood education? Okay. They did a lot of research. It's called um, adult education, it's called an andragogy, and children's education is pedagogy, and they tried to separate them, and they did a lot of research into it. And really, to be honest with you, the main, in terms of learning and all of those things, obviously it's the level of, of and you know, obviously a three-year-old 
capacity, you know, you're teaching them simpler things than you're teaching an adult. But in terms of the way they learn, um, they, the more they try to separate, the more they realize that the main difference is just experience. Mm -hmm. An adult has a lot more experience. But, um, you know, so they said, well, adults want to own their own learning. They want to, they want to have a reason for learning. And then they looked, did research on children and they said, but children want that too. <laughs> <laughs> so the more they tried to separate and, and define them as different, the more they realized that actually the, 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 we, we, we were all the same. Mm. It's just experience. So experience is a big... You, and so they said, okay, well, adults want you to, on, um, to recognize their prior learning and their experience. So, that, so adults want that. But then when they did research with a, you know, even three-year-olds, they want you to recognize that they know something. Mm -hmm. okay, a three-year-old wants you to know that you know, if, they can, if they can scribble on a bit of paper and say that's my writing, they want you to acknowledge that. You know, mm. And so even a three-year-old wants you to acknowledge that they know something. Mm. Um, so the, as I said, the more they try to separate the two, the more they realize that in terms of the way they look, people learn, it's, it's all the same. It's just experiences. We have different experiences, which is both good and bad. Um, you know, a three-year-old is much more of a sponge. You know, to get older, you're a bit more cynical. Um, you've got pain, you've got hurt, you've got all these things that um, you've got experiences that are, can be a hindrance to learning. But, but a child, a three-year-old can have a hindrance too. You know, they can have been told all their life that they're dumb. You know, for three years, they can be told they can't learn, that they're dumb, they're stupid, you're an idiot. And they'll, they'll bring that into the classroom as a three-year-old. Sad, but, but that's what they'll, they'll bring that. And if that keeps getting reinforced, it'll become who they are. They'll mm. feel like they're dumb, even if they're, you know. I don't think there's any such thing as a, a dumb child. I don't, if that's what I learned from my mother. Every child can mm. learn. Mm. Every child is you know, fearfully and wonderfully made because that's what God says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, so all those labels are wrong. And sometimes we need prayer, sometimes we need healing, and sometimes we need to be told that that's not true. Any other questions? Let's move on. Let me just, I'll just on that issue, because this is one of the things I really, this issue of teachers God can use, um, a lot of it is about creating culture. It's, it's who are you? It's not about your skills and your gifts. Okay? Um, there was a, there's a, a lovely movie that I, I can't remember. I think it was called The Little Indian or something like mm -hmm. this. Um, the, or the Little Princess or Little Indian. But this, this girl is an orphan. Her mm -hmm. father, do you know this? Yeah. It's a little princess. Yeah, little a little Indian? princess. little princess. Yeah. And so, and she gets, she's in the school and her father's very wealthy, but then he dies, I think, or um, he, he, he can't, and he's not providing yeah. for her anymore. So she gets sent to the attic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think... And, and she gets so she's treated with respect when her father's wealthy. When he's not, she gets treated as the bottom of the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so the story is about her life. And so and there's a really grumpy old <laughs> matron who treats her terribly. And so there's this beautiful scene where this grumpy old matron is you know, giving her a hard time again, and uh, you, know, you know, talking badly to her and putting her down and telling her and she um, and. And then her response is, she said, she said you, th you think you are, um, you know, whatever, but you're dad, and it goes on and on and on and on. And uh, she, she says, yes, I, I, I know I'm a princess. My, my father kept telling me that. Mm. Didn't your father tell you that? <laughs> 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 and so even as a little girl, she had this identity of being a princess, whether she mm. had money or not. Wow. And she identified that this grumpy old lady... <laughs> yeah. um, probably wasn't that old, <laughs> obviously didn't know she was a princess. Mm. <laughs> That's why she was grumpy and angry and all these things. Um, it had nothing to do with her position, had nothing to do with anything, but she knew that she was a princess. Yeah. And see, that's our, as, as teachers, we need to make sure that every child in our room, mm. at least as far as we're concerned, understands that they're a prince or princess. Mm. And they're a prince or princess because they're a child of God and he's the king of kings. Mm -hmm. okay? And they all need to know that. And see, if you can instill that in them as a three-year-old, then you're not going to have to keep working on it when they're 18. And so much of our schools, we've got to tell people our princes and princesses. Okay. What I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to think, a bit, a bit like we've already done this morning with uh, Mar Marilo? Marilo. Marilo. Marilo, I'm sorry. I'm 
Okay. Marilla. So what, as we did this morning already, I want you to think of who, in terms of your experience, who has been your best teacher? Now, it doesn't have to be a school teacher. It might have been your grandmother. It might have been your father. It might have been whoever. But who has been the best teacher in your life and why? Okay. So you might want to remember an experience. You might, but who has been your best teacher and why have they been that? What made them your best teacher? Okay, it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to give you a um, couple of minutes to think about that and to write that down. Okay. grade they would do psychology mathematics English and food technology which is like cooking you know <laughs> and the reason was only because of the teacher you know the teacher cared for them and they all loved you know I like the fact that they do food technology too we, I benefit <laughs> you know when they're bored when they're you know like Kate and Anna are at home now and we'll just be the three of us because Helen's working and they'll say um, I think I'm going to cook something. What shall I cook? <laughs> so we'll have dessert of some sort. Or they love cooking, making cookies. And you can see I benefit from their uh, <laughs> but, um, but But the reason was, and you know, so when they set their final exam, she would say, well, come in early, and she'd cook them breakfast, and she'd tell them not to worry, it's all going to be fine. And she had uh, you know, similar Aww. things. And she cared about them and got, went beyond what was necessary, so they felt... It was, it was more than, and they all did very well in food technology. You know, I think two of them got the class award and all of those things. But it was more than the teaching, wasn't it? Okay? Mm. It's more than the, a good teacher, it's not about the content so much. Is that, you, and that's what we want to look at a little bit. Yes, the content's important, but that's not, that's not what makes a great teacher. Okay? Mm. It's not what makes a teacher God can use. So I want you to write down, I want you, first of all, individually, we'll take a couple of minutes individually to think, what, what are the characteristics of a teacher that God can use? Okay, what character is, and then we'll, we'll spend some time in, in your groups. But let's, let's just, first of all, just yourself, just think through, um, I think we'll, we'll start with two minutes and see if that works, and then if we need more time, we can do that. <laughs> um, Okay, which can we wrap something off? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now. Yeah, that's fine. I've got some in my bag if you want me to bring oh, some out. Yeah, yep, no problem. I carry them for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Wise <Very good>. teacher. <laughs> Fair teacher. Okay. Yeah. 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 Experience. Okay. That's going to always stay. That's always going to be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Sorry, it's a day. My sense of you think I, I'm a dad, so I've got to tell daddy jokes all the time. You see. <laughs> it's part of the, it's the job of dance. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, if you would like to, let's take one from each from each per, from each table. So we'll go one from you, someone here, one from someone here, one from someone here. Then we'll go for a different person here, different person until we run out of ideas. Okay. So why don't we start um, this table? Okay. Who's going to give the first idea? Encouraging. Okay. So they're encouraging. Great. I wonder where we can get that one. <laughs> well done. Okay, this group. Uh, loving. Loving. Okay, fantastic. This group. Good observant. Like observant. Observant. Observant, okay. Yeah. Is that right? Observant. Yeah. Yep. 
Great, that's great. Very, that's a good characteristic. Well done. Okay, different person on this table. Caring. Caring. Okay. Okay, next table. Creative. Creative. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. <laughs> Dedicated. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. Getting all aiders. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> stable. Different person again. Patient. Patient. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Transparent. Transparent. Okay. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Big words. So that means I've got to be like a ghost or something? <laughs> Sorry. As I said, I explained. I have already explained. Oh and I've got to tell bad jokes. My job, my job description isn't there. <laughs> okay. We'll do one more from here and then we'll come back here. Okay? Discerning. Discerning? Ooh. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Okay. Uh, where are we up to? This yeah. one. Okay. Group three. Diligence. Diligence. Oh, oh. You know. <laughs> when I was at primary school, my last year of primary school, I think it was my last year, I got an award for diligence. Wow. I obviously wasn't very bright because they didn't give me an award for anything else. <laughs> they gave me one for diligence. I had, and I had no idea what it meant. I had, the teacher wouldn't tell me. I had to go and look it up in the dictionary. I <laughs> find out what I, and why, why I got an award for diligence. But yeah. So, okay. Self control. Self control, yeah. I like that. Oh, wow. Young women losing their temper. Well done. I like that. Okay. Humble. Humility. Fantastic. Okay. Motivated. Motivated. Oh. Fantastic. Okay. Any more? You don't have to. If you don't oh, yes. Oh, like Teachable spirit. Teachable oh, spirit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Get in over here. <laughs> Problem solving. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Relational. Relational. Oh, good. Fantastic. Okay, I think I'm going home soon. Okay. You got it all. Okay. Okay. You guys. Servant heart. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. We, 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 we'll come back to this. Oh, oh. Relax now. Understanding. Oh. Okay, this one. Kind. Kind. We have kind? No, we didn't. Oh, oh, oh very oh. good. Oh. Yes. Let's just put all the scripts on the High five for that one. Okay. <laughs> this, do you have any more? You don't have to if you don't. It's fine. Um, acknowledge. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. So they acknowledge the person. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm not brilliant at spelling, but that's it. We'll come back. I'll get you the next time. Okay. I see that hand. I see that hand. <laughs> Competitive. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I'm just reaching out of my heart. <laughs> okay, yes! Ready? <laughs> no, not so. It's not a competition, <laughs> it's vibrant. Vibrant. Oh, very good. Uh, 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 took a word off the wall. Okay. <laughs> Where did that one come? Oh, I saw it. Collaborative, I see. I get it, Brent. Okay, very good. We'll include those ones. <laughs> okay, next one. Fruitful. 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 Brain. Fruitful. Oh, oh, oh. Fantastic. Any more on the script? If you haven't, that's fine. Yeah. Gentle. Gentle. Yeah. Oh. Um, Touchable heart. Okay. Does it yes. have to be one word or can it be one oh. phrase? Whoa, you're pushing it. Well, let's see if we can put it into one word. What's the phrase? Push it. Because what I see a teacher that sees every student as unique. Okay. Um, so what, can we put that into a word? Observant. Yeah. yeah, but there's something more than that. Okay. Um, 
Okay, we'll, we'll put that down. Uh, see every student as you need. Children. Sees. Personal. Insightful. Yeah, I think it includes all of those. But we put it down. Like, that's absolutely true. So many words. We put it down like that because that's the intention. Oh, I Why? Nice. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, we got two from there. That was cheating. Oh, that was cheating. Oh, that's cheating, isn't it? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm joking. It's no problem. No problem. Okay. Listener. Listener. Yeah. Okay. This oh. one. Oh. Respect and honor. Respect and Yeah. Ooh. I like that okay. one. Then we're going to go through a whole other list. Uh, <laughs> humor. Humor. Oh, yes. Okay. Really humor is. is. Wow. Okay. Um, that the squalor spies in this one. You let me out. Okay. Interceding for the children. Interceding for the children. Interceding, yeah. So we put that prayer full and we say for children. How about that? No. Okay, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. We know it's more than that, but we want to make sure that they're interceding. I get that, that's good. Intercessor. Well, I can put that, okay. We'll put intercessor. Are you happy now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that okay? <laughs> okay, how many more from this group? Um, not judging. Okay, yeah. What's not judging? What would be the opposite of judging? Uh, accepting? Uh, accepting? Oh, uh, yeah. We happy with that, Selena? Equal. Who's accepting? That's okay. Okay. Any more? What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this list here. So we leave it over the Oh, okay. Is that okay? So if you want to come and add to this, okay, feel free. Because we're coming to the end of our time, and I want to. Um, there's one more thing I want to say before we conclude in about three minutes. <laughs> I don't want to go over. Okay, we don't want to go over. Since I promised we'd finish on time. Okay, so please add your things to this list. If you've got more, fantastic. The list is, you know, no one person's going to be all of this at its maximum. Do you, do you understand? But Jesus, of course. But uh, apart from Jesus. You know, as I was praying this morning, I was, saying, and I was going for a walk and praying and saying, God, what, what is it that makes a teacher that God can use? Who, who does God use? You know what I felt he said? He says, I can use anyone. You know that? That was, that was what I felt he said. He said, hey, I can, I can use anyone. And I said, well, what, because I listened to you? I said, no. He says, I can use anyone. Now, so God is the almighty God and he can use any teacher. However, okay, the issue is not who God can use, but how do you put yourself in a position that he can use you to bring more fruit in the children's lives? Okay, so how do you, how do you position yourself for fruitfulness okay, as a teacher? Because God can use any teacher. He's, he... It's a master teacher himself. Do you, do you understand? He can use a lousy teacher. <laughs> you know, he can, he can use a, all the op you take all the opposites of that. A grumpy old, you, you know what I mean? He can use them mm. because he's God. Okay, but we want to put ourselves in a position where we become the best teacher we can for him. Do you, do you understand? Where he can use us the most um, to touch lives. And so that's the first thing I want to say: is that God. Um, he, he, can, he can use any teacher. The issue for me is how do we put ourselves in a position where he can shape us, where he can mould us. And see, one of the issues, the problems, this is, this is part of the problem when we talk about teachers God can use, because he can use any teacher. When you look at, at education strategies, Okay, there's, there's two extremes, and we'll look at this a little bit more tomorrow. I just want to leave you with this. One is what's called, it's called lots of things, but we'll call it teacher-centered. Okay, so there's a teacher-centered model of teaching in the classroom. What that means is it's centered on me as a teacher. It's about me being a good teacher rather than anything else. And so I do all I can to be the best teacher I can. And if I'm a good teacher, 
then all the children are going to learn and they're going to be what God wants them to be or they're going to learn. So there's a model of teaching that's teacher-centered or teacher-centric and it's all about me teaching and I've done my job when I've taught you as a student. Okay? So once I've done everything, I've been a good teacher and, it's, and I feel good because I've taught well. Do, do, do you understand? So that's one model. Now the other model which has become more popular okay, is what would be called student-centric or student-centered. Okay, so it's all about the student, how they learn, uh, making sure that they learn well, and my role as a teacher is to make sure that the student's learning, okay? And it's focused on the student and what the student learns, okay? Now, I'd like to suggest, and that's what we want to talk a little bit about, is the other, another model, which is in the middle. It's about being centered on learning. Okay? And it's a partnership between the student and the teacher. And that's what a lot of student-centered models mean. But, but the extreme <laughs> is where it's all about the student and me as a teacher, I've got to do what I can. But, but the reality is, I think this is the model we want in a classroom. It's, it's about, where well, the classroom is about learning. It's not about the teacher, it's not about the student, it's about learning and creating an environment that's conducive and helpful to learning for everyone in the classroom. So yes, every student has different learning styles and all of those sorts of things. Every teacher has different teaching styles. And we need to understand those. But the issue is, have we created an environment where the student is learning what they need to learn? And our role as a teacher is to create that environment. Is, is that the concept that all of um, for a year. His was a his model was called a um, I can't remember what the actual term was. I should I did have studied it and my papers on it. But uh, it's a freedom model. It's probably more like our YWAM model. It's it's um, um it's yes. It was, I just can't remember what it was. There's actually a, I just can't remember them too. They create knowledge together. Yeah. So it's more. It's, and it's, it was about learning English. He did a lot of language learn acquisition that way. And a lot of so Friere was partly that, um, and so it would be more that. Um, he, yeah, so it, and it's probably more where we fit, we fit comfortably as YWAM um, in, in the, his model. Like his was probably one of the ones that we fit most comfortably. Um, it was about, so it's about the purpose, but it was more about the purpose of learning rather than the process of learning. Um, that it, in terms of Friere's approach, it was about, um, equipping people to, for freedom. It was, it was creating freedom within the, the person. He, he worked in fairly, oh, in South America obviously, but in, um, in fairly oppressed communities. I think it was in Nicaragua or? Brazil. Brazil, it was Brazil he worked. Oh, sorry, okay. But his, his whole approach was to bring freedom to the person. Okay, it was. Isn't that the same thing that we try to do in Oh, absolutely. I said that's what I say. It's probably one of the it's closest. But it was a his my understanding of his approach. Although he he does have an approach that I think we can learn from. Um, it it was more about the purpose of the approach as much as it was. The, so his purpose brought about his um, his process, which was about bringing freedom, creating freedom in the thinking of the. Now we could spend lots of time talking, but I promised everyone we'd finish on time, and I, I've already got four minutes over. So hold your question. We'll keep. So this is what we want to look at. But I just want to leave you with this thought. So talk about it. Ask questions. Look up online if you don't know who Freire is. Look him up. His name is F R I E R E. Freire. I can't remember. Follow. 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 That's right. Okay, Freire. Okay, so let's pray and let's go and have lunch and we'll come back and this is what we, so we want to talk about um, how do we create that because see this is what we, what we want to create in our classroom, a place where people can learn, mm. where it's not about the student, it's not about the teacher, it's about learning together and creating a corporate community where everyone <laughs> is able to learn, where everyone is able to learn, where no one misses out. 
um, and where we all corporately take responsibility for learning. If someone's struggling, we help them. Um, because it's about us all learning. It's not about the student being, it's not about the teacher, it's about us. Amen. Okay? Fantastic. So Lord, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you that you love us. We want to thank you that you care for us. And we just pray that you would, um, Lord, just, just give us a good afternoon and evening and just bless us in all we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.